I did a little search before, uh, before this event. In fact, I've done this search a few times. It's um, a Google search for sales funnels. Anyone want to take a guess how many? Thousands, millions. How many millions? 16 million. 33 and a half million pictures of sales funnels on Google. Wow. I mean, really, this is, this is a quite a ubiquitous image. I mean, really, it is. Um, so has anyone seen one before? We haven't, though, have you? Because they're imaginary. It's a, they're a diagram, aren't they? They're not a real thing. We, we can picture these things in our minds, can't we? But not really in our businesses. So one of the first diagrams you come across in the Wall Street Marketing book is um, overlaying the Philip Kotler model of rational decision-making. Rational. <laughs> um, rational decision-making on a funnel, um, which I used because everybody has seen these funnels and they think they, they kind of know what they mean and it's shorthand, isn't it, for, for the sales process. But if you put water in the top of a funnel in your kitchen, it all comes out at the bottom. Anyone you're ever going to meet will eventually reach for their credit card and deposit yeah. some money in your bank account. This is the metaphor. The metaphor is a funnel. But in reality, most businesses don't have funnels. And so one of the diagrams that follows up very quickly behind my, yes, I'm going to use the one you know diagram, is this. And this is the 13 touch point leaks, of which we'll explore quite a lot um, over the couple of days. And hopefully you've done your profit priority profile where it's popped out for you which one here you should be focusing on. But today I just want to say, it's a colander really, isn't it? And if you really had to choose a kitchen utensil, it'd be a colander for most marketing and sales setups. Because actually people are going, filtering out of this process. It's a reducing number of people at each stage in the process. Which is why we use a better picture. A better picture. Every time you hear the word sales funnel, um, I think uh, The Matrix is now a, a kind of zeit it's a cultural film. Most people understand The Matrix as a... So do you know that scene where someone's looking at the spoon and it's bending around? There is no spoon. I'd just like you to play that in your mind every time you see a sales funnel. Say, there is no sales funnel. Because they truly don't exist, and the moment you start talking about them, you start behaving as if one does, which means you spend money on marketing that doesn't turn into sales results, which is rather disappointing. So I'd like you to paint a new picture. Every time you see a funnel, I want you to paint this new picture. And what I want you to paint a picture of is a bucket. You knew I was bringing it, didn't you? I can't travel anywhere without a bucket. Um, I'm trying to work out whether EasyJet accepts this as hand luggage. I went to Belfast the other day, and I didn't risk it, but I'll try it next time. Um, so... I want you to imagine that your business has a bucket. And it's, you know, it's a pretty good bucket. People want what, you want to sell, what you're selling. They tell people it's pretty good. Because if you had a hole in it, we know what would happen, right? I don't need to do that bit. We know that. Hole in the bottom, don't spend money. Let's say you've got a great little bucket. Time to turn the taps on? Yeah? Okay. So let's imagine the taps everywhere. And you're running around frantically. <gasps> what? Oh! Is that, I definitely see that. <laughs> yeah. so, so sometimes what happens when you turn the taps on is you're running around frantically with your little bucket because you're perhaps quite a small business or it's a, a new thing that you're doing. Or maybe you're just trying to save a bit of money. Um, so you, know, you, you haven't got all the energy to do this all of the time. And so what you really need are some funnels and filters. Some funnels and filters that are going to channel all of this to your bucket. And it's only when you have those funnels and filters that it's really worth spending money on these taps. Because otherwise, you're going to spend money to make yourself run around frantically, probably picking up a few of the wrong kind of clients. It'll then drain your energy, which means you won't be able to run around as fast or as energetically to catch those opportunities. So if you have a sales funnel, I want you just to think to yourself, there is no funnel, buckets, funnels, taps. And then, I want you to think about how this sits in your organisation. Now, most people would say that the bucket is around service, account management and delivery, which indeed it is. That's the part of most business operations I am talking about. 
And then most people would say that the funnels and filters, that's the job of a sales team. And they're right. That is definitely the part of the process I'm talking about. And then most people would say, oh, yes, marketing, that's lead generation, isn't it, Bryony? I wince slightly and say, yes, that is what the world thinks it is. Because if you think marketing is just taps, then you are almost certainly leaving money on the table somewhere. Because really, what marketing does is it spans the whole journey, the buckets, the funnels, and taps. And yes, there is more to do in the taps area for people who have marketing in their job titles. But that is not the entirety of their job. And so if you take the 13 touch point leaks and you lay them over the responsibility that goes across a customer journey, what you find is there are 13 projects, 13 things in your business that somebody with the job title marketing or 30 years experience in marketing could help you with. These are all projects that somebody who understands marketing can put in place so that you have a full path to purchase. And if you are only doing taps, then you have a hole in this process. So, I want you to have a think about stealing your neighbour's cat. This is Bucket, named after the bucket. Yeah. This is Bucket. I can't bring Dylan, he doesn't like being on stage. Um, so, let's imagine this was your neighbour's cat. How would you steal the cat? Offer it food, yeah, love, okay. Stroking. Love, play with it, absolutely, a few little toys, okay. So really, in order to steal a nervous cat, you've got to lay a little path, which looks a bit like that path I just laid out for you, the 1 to 13. Little path of toys and treats. And if you did that on one day and came back the next day and there was no treats, is this cat going to adopt you? Process of adoption, it's the cat's choice. Is the cat going to adopt you if you put treats out on one day? Yeah. No, absolutely right. Which is why the guys who spoke earlier said that this took, while, this took a while to get payback. They had to do it for an extended period of time. So I want you to have a think about um, winning business as stealing your neighbour's cat. Obviously, you know, the neighbour perhaps isn't so good with cats. Yours might be the best place to hang out with and you love cats. It's a good thing to do for this cat. So you're going to steal the neighbour's cat. And what I suggest you do is to lay down a path of stepping stones. Think of it as a basket of cat toys and cat treats. All the way from where the cat likes to hang out at the bottom of the garden, down the neighbour, you know you've been profiling this cat. You know where it hangs out, it's the tree at the bottom of the next door's garden. So you put a path from its hangout spot to where you want it to be and you fill it up with treats. And, and then you go out as the salesperson Marketing has put down the path for you. And as the salesperson, you're one step ahead, reaching in for the right toy, the right treat, just to encourage the cat forwards. And then it gets a bit braver and comes further, and you encourage the cat forwards. If I got this cat, put it on a lead, and dragged it through the hedge, <laughs> you know, I've got sales targets to meet, um, how would that feel? Well, I would be scratched. The cat would be irritated, and I'd imagine the neighbour might sue me. So do have a think about doing this respectfully, and think about what Karen was saying about you know, really taking people on their own journey. So customers are like cats. There is no sales funnel. Bucket funnels taps in that order, and think about laying this path to purchase. We're going to think about that again tomorrow. For today, what we've lined up for you with our speakers who are from our partner organisations, we were a bit picky about who we had in the room because we wanted them to be the right kind of people for you potentially to work with. And so we've asked them to map some of the things they do to the buckets, funnels, taps. And most of it isn't digital. I know. We live in the real world with people who use PCs, hang out on LinkedIn. <laughs> Sometimes actually shake hands with other people, read a book. I won't care. I'll let them do that. So we are now going to be introduced to the cat toys and cat treats that our partners 
want to show you, that they can show you how they can use those to get people to hang out on your sofa. I'm the bucket lady, or the cat woman, and I'll catch you later. Thank you very much.